Hello friends, this video on S block elements part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The question says beryllium and magnesium do not give color to the flame while other alkaline metals do. Why? See, because beryllium and magnesium, the size is small and the ionization energy is high. So they need more energy to lose electron. Right? See, once it, it loses electron, then only it will come back to the ground state, right? So the energy in the Bunsen burner which we use is not a sufficient energy or is not sufficient to excite the electrons of beryllium and magnesium because the ionization energy is more. If you go down the group, the size increase, the ionization energy decrease. Since the ionization energy decrease, IE decrease, since IE decrease, so these uh, other alkaline earth metals, they can be excited. The electrons of the uh, other alkaline metals can be excited with the heat from Bunsen burner itself. But for beryllium and magnesium, this ionization energy is pretty high. Bunsen burner energy, Bunsen burner will not be able to provide energy to excite the electrons. Potassium carbonate cannot be prepared by solvate process. See, because the question is K2CO3 cannot be prepared. Why? Because KHCO3 is soluble in water. Is soluble in water. So the whole process, solid process depends on, for example, if you see my Na2CO3 was prepared and in case, in this case, NaHCO3 was insoluble in water. So we could precipitate this out and then we could use this to create Na2CO3. But in this case, KHCO3 is insoluble, insoluble in water. So we'll not be able to use solvate process to prepare this. Hope you understand. See in the solvate process, we prepare NaHCO3 first. And then this is, this is insoluble, it precipitates out and we heat this to get NH2CO3. But KSO3 is, is soluble in water. So it won't precipitate out in water. So we will not be able to use this for preparation of K2CO3. The question says the hydroxide and the carbonates of sodium and potassium. For example, NaOH, NH2CO3, KOH, K2CO3. So these guys, it says, are soluble in water, but the magnesium hydroxides and the calcium hydroxides or CaCO3, MgCO3, they are not insoluble, they are not soluble in water. Why? So if you see, this guy has plus 2 charge, right? And these guys have plus 1 charge, right? So the lattice enthalpy of this is more. So you want to dissolve it to break this lattice enthalpy, right? So, but this is more, so it will not be soluble by the enthalpy of hydration. So if both will have enthalpy of hydration, that will that will be some negative values. So that should compensate the lattice enthalpy. But in this case, since plus two char, the lattice enthalpy is more, so it won't compensate the lattice enthalpy here. So it won't dissolve. But in this case, that lattice enthalpy will be less. So the enthalpy of hydration will compensate for the lattice of enthalpy and will dissolve. Why are lithium salts commonly hydrated while others are anhydrous? So lithium, if you see Li plus, it's very small inside. And if you see the charge ratio, charge density, if you see, is high. Right? Li plus, charge density is high, the size is small. Thus, it is able to attract water molecules. So this is it's able to attract water, water molecule, you have lithium in hydrated form. The other alkalis, ion, they don't have small size or high charge ratio density. So they're not able to attract water molecules. This is H2O. Why is LIF most insoluble in water where LiCl is soluble not only in water but also in acetone? So if you see LIF, F is very high electronegative. So this is ionic. But when I see LiCl, this is little bit uh, covalent also. It's partial covalent, partial ionic, right? Since this is totally ionic and it has higher lattice enthalpy, it is not soluble in water. Why? Because this is ionic, first thing is ionic and it has high lattice enthalpy, right? First thing is ionic, second is high lattice enthalpy. So the hydration enthalpy won't compensate with lattice enthalpy here. So it won't be, it is not soluble. But this is this is partial covalent, partial ionic. So it is soluble in acetone and water. 
The next question is which of the alkaline metal is thermally most stable? So if you see here CO3 is a big one, right? So for this the matching metal has to be the big one. So let's see which one is the biggest one. So here if you see, I'll write the order. It is beryllium, magnesium, calcium, sodium, barium. So which one is the biggest? This guy is the biggest, right? This guy is the biggest, so this will be most stable. So Ba CO3 is most stable because CO3 is still big, right? So if you want the compound to be thermally stable, both B and CO3 should be of comparable size. So and B is the biggest out of all that will have a comparable size with CO3 to match. How would you explain the following observation? BeO is almost insoluble. BeSO4 is soluble in water, BO is soluble but BeSO4 is insoluble and LiL is more soluble than KiN. See in case of BeO, let's take this example, BeO, both the oxygen and beryllium molecules are almost same size, so they have higher lattice enthalpy. is high, but if you take BeSO4, is B this one, SO4 is this big. They are not stable, right? So they have uh, lattice enthalpy is low, right? So since it has low lattice enthalpy, the hydration enthalpy when you mix with water will compensate this lattice enthalpy, right? If, let's suppose this is five, this is two, just giving a number. So, so hydration enthalpy will take care of this, and it will be soluble. Similar case applied here also. So if you see, let me change the color. So if you see here, the BA is bigger in size. So if you see BA over to something like this, BA is this, and O is this. So again here, if you see, the lattice enthalpy will be less. But if you talk about BASO4, sulfate ion is big. So in fact, both BASO4 are bigger in size, right? So the lattice enthalpy is more. So the lattice enthalpy is more, the hydration enthalpy won't uh, compensate this value, but hydration enthalpy will compensate this value. So this will become soluble. Let's take the last part here. LII is more soluble than KI in ethanol. That means it looks like LII is covalent, looks like. And KII is less covalent, so it may be ionic. And that's why it is more soluble and uh, covalent. So if you can prove that Li is covalent and Ki is ionic, it proves up a thing. So the rule we have is if the difference of the electronegativity is if electronegativity difference is more than 1.7, it is ionic. Less than 1.7, it is covalent. Correct? So let's find for LiI. LiI. For lithium, it is 2.2, and for iodine, it is 2.66. Find the difference is 2.66 minus 2.22, it is 0.44. So it is covalent. Let's take for Ki. For potassium, it is 0.82. For iodine, it is again 2.66. Find the difference. This 2.66 minus 0.82, it is almost equal to 1.8, and that is greater than 1.7. So it is a ionic thing and this is covalent and this is what we have here. correct. So with this if my lithium iodide is covalent and, and potassium iodide is uh, ionic that means lithium iodide will be more soluble in ethanol. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos. Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.